Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Thank you this morning for your mercy over us, bringing us to this new day as we gather at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for how you began with us yesterday. This morning again, our hearts we open to you, and we ask that you will again uh, visit with us, speak to us, and speak to us in a manner that will be able to uh, chew, will be able to assimilate. We are praying that our hearts, you will open in faith to respond to you. Cause our eyes to see what we need to see so that we can experience your help in the manner you desire. Thank you, gracious Father, as we look into your word we are praying that you will breathe upon your word to minister life again to us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are two scriptures we we'll read that will be guiding our praying this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9, verse 10. Then we'll go to the book, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9 says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But no doubt that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Mark chapter 5, from verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered him, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, much that he would not send them out a way out of the country. 
Now there were there night, there night unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they, said they, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee, and had had compassion on thee. Verse 20, And he departed and began to publish in the Capolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. May God bless his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now the passage we read in that Ecclesiastes was kind of um, celebrating youthfulness. That to be young is great, to be young is good. And there are great, great things, great potentials that as a young person you have. So you should rejoice that you are a young person, you are a young man, you are a young woman in your youth. And let your heart cheer thee and all the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But no doubt that for all these things, God will bring thee unto judgment. That there's a liberty that uh, we have as young people. As a youth, you have that liberty to live the kind of life perhaps you may choose to live uh, because you are young. But the Bible is making us realize that yes, as you rejoice and as you enjoy the privilege of being young and you are full of life, you are bubbling, and your heart seems to be, you know, cheering you. And whatever your eyes see, you want to go for it because you have the strength for it. The Bible is making us realize that as we do all that our hearts perhaps may lead us to do, as we go for all that our eyes are enticed to pursue in this life while we are young, we should know that there is a consequence. At the end of the day, there's a judgment we will experience. There's a judgment of God that will come on us. And we saw that in the life of the young man, um, Cain, as at yesterday. How that when he was born and they celebrated his birth and how it was celebrated that he was from God. And he began to live to have his liberty to do whatever comes to his heart. And we saw the result of how he could even kill. And in the end, he faced the judgment of God, becoming, becoming a vagabond. The Bible made us realize that God was saying he was not doing well. And I want us to know that when you are not doing well in life as a young person, just know that there is a cumulative result there is a cumulative end result of what you will reap as of your conduct as a young person. So the Bible cautions every young person. It says, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. 
for childhood and youth are vanity. The other version says they are like smoke. Your childhood and your youth is vanity. Before you realized it, you have passed the stage and you can never be young again. So when you don't engage your youthful age to do something meaningful, when you don't engage your youthful time to invest for your future, when you pass that stage, you leave regretting. And that is what we are seeing even in the young man, uh, the man of Gadara, that we are, uh, the Gadarin that we are reading about uh, this, this morning. We don't know how his problem began, but we know it began by not doing well. It began by not taking instructions. It began by living loose. It began by not accepting discipline. Because every young person, if not trained, if not disciplined, you will end up, you know, harvesting the result of your uh, careless living, as is often the case. So for this young man, the end case, the end result of his life we are seeing here is that he became mad. He became even possessed by the devils and by demons that he himself could testify that there were a legion of demons possessing him. In other words, he has become captured. He has become a captive. And when the burden was being read yesterday, there was a point that was raised that was so, uh, you know, shocking but real that to be a victim of, uh, you know, of, uh, to be a victim is a nightmare. It, is, it means enslavement. It means captivity. It means bondage. It means oppression, horror, trauma, torment, misery, frustration, and eventual death. And I see the case of this young man or this man, madman of Gadara, because even his name has been taken over as madman. The Bible could not even tell us his name. Uh, that was his predicament. Whatever becomes the end result of your life becomes your definition. That this man no longer had identity than the identity of a mad person. And what is it that made him mad when he could not take to instruction, when he could not receive discipline as a young person, when he chose to go the way he wanted to go to follow his heart and his eyes, doing whatever his heart told him to do, doing whatever pleased, to, pleased him in his own eyes, he ended up who he became in the end, a madman. And we are seeing from the scriptures that he had been in that condition for long. And I know that no family celebrate madness. No family is comfortable that one of their own is going mad, is going insane. And when all of that begins, every effort is being made to see that that madness is cured, that madness is controlled, because we even have the mention of a mental person, a mad person in the family. You know that for some part of the world, it's like... <laughs> Before people will be involved with that kind of a family, they will, you know, think twice. Because it will look as if it's something that may run in the family. So you see, this young man uh, ended up becoming mad. But I saw that the Bible even was making us realize that efforts were being made. It says, it says he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he has been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Every effort to restrain him. Every effort to control him. Every effort to see how he can be you know, handled. 
so that his case does not escalate, uh, could not succeed. And his case was actually a bad case. So they left him alone. You know, for a family to leave their loved one, to leave home, and to begin to wander in the streets, and to begin to move from street to street, sleeping in the open, uh, I don't think any family would be comfortable with that. But this young man's family, they had to do that. They had to leave him alone. They left him to himself. And he began to... And when he was left to himself, what were the things he was doing? The Bible said that day and night, he was always cutting himself with stones. Injuring himself, himself, crying and cutting himself. So you see, as he was injuring himself, crying in the process, and all of that, day and night, he never stopped. You know, and as if those are symptoms of, you know, um, some, some, some drugs that uh, some young people abuse. He was experiencing perhaps some itching that he could not contain, that was never stopping. And night and day, he was damaging himself. He was injuring himself, wounding himself. So you see, it means the wounds of the previous night are yet to be healed when he's cutting fresh wounds and bleeding afresh. So old and new wounds all upon one person. And I could imagine flies following him and perching on those injuries and the sores, the pores, and the bad odor that his body will be pro, you know, producing. You see, that scripture was telling us that whatever you do in your body. Now, we, we, we are seeing a scenario of a case that humanly is concluded to be impossible. So he was left alone. Whatever he chose to do to himself, nobody was there to watch it anymore. Nobody was there to stop him anymore because he was violent. And you see, young, I mean, madmen, I don't know how it happens, but they have extraordinary strength. You know, madness puts you to task. We saw the young man very energetic, but... See where he was expending his energy. And then we saw that this young man has every effort to caution, to train, to discipline him failed. He was now abandoned. Even instruments of restraint that were you know, employed to restrain him, he will break them, he will cut them asunder and he's free. Tell me, a person that have that kind of strength, who can withstand him to say you want to physically restrain him? So they were saying, they left him to himself. And he was crying, he was injuring himself day and night. Where? In the cold, in the tombs, where dead bodies were buried. That was where he was living. That is where these demons pushed him to. Because he has been captured. He was cornered to that spot. And he was in that condition. Day and night. And often. The, often every night. You could, the, the relations will be hearing the echo. Of his crying. Of his shouting. Out in the tombs. And nothing could be done. I could imagine the parents. Coming down with BP, high blood pressure, because there's no way they will be comfortable. A mother, perhaps, will be comfortable with her child out in the cold, and there's nothing to be done. It was a reproach to his family, nothing they could do. So he was left alone, waiting to die. Because that is the worst that will happen to him next. And it looks like the demons were already pushing him to the point of death. So that eternally 
you will be lost. But why in that condition something happened? A day came and it looks like his case file was raised in heaven. That there is a young man in a condition that must be attained to. There's a young man in a, in a tight condition, helpless situation. If heaven will do nothing about it, he's about to die. And so, the, the Lord Jesus told his disciples that day as evening was approaching. It looked like that young man perhaps was going to die that day. And Jesus arose, told his disciples, let's cross to the other side. And we saw the devil react sharply. There was a storm to discourage that crossing over. The storm raged, but Jesus calmly was sleeping, knowing that that mission must succeed. Rebuked the storm, it became calm, and they crossed. And as soon as they were crossed over, the Bible said, immediately there met him, verse 2, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. And he said, because that he had been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, the man ran and worshipped him. It dawned on me that even though this man was mad, even though this man has been captured and conquered by a legion of demons that outnumbered him in every way, and they have taken over his senses of reasoning and everything, but when this man saw Jesus, the Bible said he ran. He ran and fell at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him. Hmm. It meant that this man, all along, there's something he has been yearning to do, but this legion would not allow him. His captors would not allow him. He longed to worship God. He longed to worship Jesus. He has heard of Jesus. Or perhaps he had encountered Jesus before. He has been a worshiper before. Before he was misguided, misled by his heart, and he found himself in that condition. You know, the Bible said that if an unclean spirit goes out of a man and is now seeking for a place to lodge and he does not find, it will go back to where it was sent away from. And if he finds that place empty, it will only go back to mobilize more to come. And so it could be that he has been a young man who once knew Jesus. But as he allowed his heart to deceive him, the enemy mobilized not just several more, but a legion to come and possess him, perhaps. And so he has been yearning to, to worship Jesus. So when he saw him afar, the Bible says he ran. And that running was like the race of his life. That running was like he summoned up his strength, the whole of his strength, to run that race. Jesus was yet afar coming when the man ran and fell at his feet and worshipped him. I'm seeing a need for us this morning to pray. My dear friends, I don't know your own condition sitting out there. I don't know what is your predicament. I don't know what your own not doing well. You're not receiving instructions. You're refusing discipline as a student, as a member of your family, and as a member of the society. I don't know how far it has taken you. I don't know the kind of consequence you are beginning to reap as a result of your misbehavior. I don't know if you are already into drug. I don't know if you are already, you know, you know, misbehaving 
sleeping around, as was mentioned yesterday, committing immorality here and there. I don't know the, the kind of group of young people like yourselves that you have joined, whether they are court groups and you have taken certain oaths that are now having implication on you. I don't know the kind of things you have done in life that have put you in the condition you are right now. You may have been sent to prison already and your case has rather escalated. You came out of prison more terrible. And so your parents have left you to yourself and you have been from one trouble to the other. You have suffered. You know it. You yourself, you have seen the, the, the torture. Many times you go through with the law enforcement agency. Young girl, you wanted to be popular. You wanted to be famous. And it has led you to do terrible things on the social media. See how you flaunt your body. See how you, you scantily dress and expose your sensitive parts for the whole world to see. And I tell you, those millions of followers you have, they are nothing but millions of legion. Because they are taking you captive. You are there exposing yourself to them and thinking that you are a hero. No, you are mad. Something has gone wrong with you. And you don't know how to come out of it. Because now they have gotten you everywhere. You that is taking drugs. And now it has gotten so bad that you cannot withdraw from it. Because it's like if you do, you will die. And you are afraid. And look at it has made you drop out of your career. Your, career, your friends have gone ahead. And you are backward. All because you, you refuse to do well. I see the Lord Jesus coming for you. Young man, you are in prison, perhaps, listening to this. What sent you there? It is your refusal to do well. It is your refusal to be trained. Your refusal to be disciplined. Look at where it has landed you. Nobody even knows you are in prison. And you have you are spent years. And it's looking like you will die there. I see Jesus coming for you this morning. The Lord Jesus decided that that young man in his condition must be delivered. And so, whatever is the raging of the devil, Jesus knew that nothing was going to stop him. And the young man too, I don't know how, but he made a choice. He made a very violent choice. Today, Jesus must attend to me. Today, I must be at the feet of Jesus. And I can say that he took those demons completely unawares. I don't know what happened, that they couldn't stop him. Before they knew it, he was already at the feet of Jesus. So tell me, coming to the feet of Jesus to say you want to reclaim a soul. <laughs> those demons too knew that it's all over. The only thing they could do is to begin to confuse him to say, what have I got to do with you? <laughs> he knew very well that he was not the one speaking. Because for him, he wanted to be at the feet of Jesus. He wanted to worship Jesus. And so he was there. And Jesus rebuked those demons and cast them out. All those that conquered him. All those demons that were his captors. The Lord Jesus stood for him that day and he was he gained his victory. My friend, this morning, I don't know the level to which the enemy has pushed you in doing terrible things. Because all you sit now that goes through your mind is evil, one evil thought or the other. That is what keeps crisscrossing your mind. How to do terrible things. The other day you picked your father's phone. And you went and used his ATM details and you bought things online. You emptied his account. He never knew. He was wondering how the money disappeared from his account. But you did it. I want you to know that you are graduating. You have started small, now at home. But before you know it, it's going to land you in jail. Repent. Jesus is coming for you now. You 
that uses the device. Instead of using it for something that will build you up, you are using it to do things that will damage your life. Pornography is what you keep watching. One useless thing to the other, and quietly it is taking possession of your mind. Now you sleep, you find yourself having sex in the dreams. Because you have opened your mind to demons to begin to invade you. Jesus is coming for you. For this young man, as Jesus appeared, he knew that this is his chance. He made a choice. I want life. I don't want to die. Because he has already been pushed to the tomb, awaiting to die the next moment. I don't know what the devil is planning to do with your life. But Jesus has seen his plans ahead. And he is coming to rescue you. He is coming to recover you. And he is standing today so that you can make up your mind. The young man, mad, the madman, he made a choice. And I discovered that even as a madman, he has a right to make a choice. And he made the correct choice. I will run to Jesus. And when he ran to Jesus, he was delivered. This morning, the opportunity for you to be helped of God, the opportunity for heaven to intervene in your case. Everybody has given up on you. They have left you to yourself. But Jesus won't let you to be to yourself. He's coming to rescue you. He's coming to restore you again. He's coming to deliver you so that you will become more than a conqueror. That young man rose and began to do what he never thought he would do again. As the Jesus is coming for you, I believe that God is going to intervene in your life and things are going to turn around for you. Your captivity is going to be turned around. Rise to your feet as we pray this moment. Come and take your place, O Lord. Come and take your place, O Lord, in my life. Come and take your place in my life. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. Come and take your place, O oh Lord Jesus, come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take your place in my life. Come and take your place. If you are making that choice to say, I've had enough of the devil. I want to turn to Jesus. I want to hand over to Jesus. I want to surrender to Jesus to save me, to deliver me. Young man, can you just raise your hand wherever you are? Lift that hand to the Lord as I commit you to Jesus this moment. Yes, God bless you. You have said, Lord, I've, I've dabbled, I've played, I've gambled with my life enough in the hands of the devil. And I won't wait for him to destroy me finally. Because his plan is to kill, to destroy. That is all he has. Today, I want to make the choice that he will not stop me from making. I want to surrender to Jesus. I want Jesus to help me. I want Jesus to deliver me. Can I see that hand once again? Lift up that hand. You are saying, Lord Jesus, young girl. You are saying, Jesus, I need your intervention in my life. Quickly, can you just step forward? As we commit you to the Lord now, quickly, quickly, step out. Step out, God bless you. Quickly, 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 come out. Today, Jesus is going to take over that life. Today, Jesus is going to rebuke those legions. Whatever their number, whatever is the habit, whatever is the stronghold of the enemy over your life, as you surrender to Jesus at his feet, that is the end of that problem. You will be restored. Yes, if you are coming out quickly, just do so as we pray this moment. Our 
Uh, Father God, we thank you for these, your children, these that have heard your word and are running out to you for your intervention in their lives. Lord God, we ask, do the same thing you did, even for the sake of that young man. He was in a helpless and hopeless condition, awaiting death, but you turned around his fortune. Lord, for these ones, we ask that your mighty hand will stretch out to them. Whatever is the grip of the enemy over them, we command that hand of the enemy to wither in the name of Jesus. We ask that your mighty hand will break every chain of captivity, every wrong habit that their lives are entangled with. We ask that they will be delivered. You say, whosoever the Son of Man shall set free shall be free indeed. You are freed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father, for in Jesus' name we are prayed.